What number? 13. Right? The, the combination of truth and error. Yes, the Lord wants unity. But no, He doesn't want a unity in error. He wants unity in truth. And the question is, how much truth are you busy with in your religious experience? Because if we have to overlook each other's errors, dogmatical or religious errors, in order for convenience sake not to upset one another, we are missing the point. Here, another picture of Pope John Paul II being blessed in a pagan American Indian ritual. You see, he's even bowing his head to show his reverence for this pagan ritual where he's receiving a blessing. Acknowledging that he's receiving it, brothers and sisters. Uh, another one of Pope John Paul in the Buddhist temple in 1984. And here he sits with his ecumenical council. All the religious leaders from the different denominations and different religions around the world coming, him sitting on his big fat white chair and them all sitting on their little wooden hard chairs showing their total submission to him as their high priest. Now this is what the Bible is warning about. It says, yes, there's going to be a high priest. We have a great high priest in heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, and by the way, there's going to be another high priest on earth. And there's whole chapters about who this is and what his colors are and how it's going to work. And Daniel speaks over and over and over and over about who the Antichrist is. I suggest you do a study and you start to look and see the connections between religions and Rome. Pope John Paul II's first Assisi ecumenical prayer meeting in 1986, sitting with his friend the Dalai Lama and all the other religions around the world. This word here, ecumenical, sometimes called ecumenism, right? Ecumenism or ecumenism. This, I believe, should become a swear word for you if you're a true Christian. Protestantism should be afraid to even mention the word ecumenical because what it means is that the whole world is coming together in error. The combination of truth and error. Yes, the Lord wants uh, unity, but not unity in error. Unity in truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Unity in Jesus. And there's no way to get to the Father but by Him. So this idea of mixing the Buddhists with the, uh, the Hindus, with the Jains, with the soccer guys, with the sheiks, with the snake worshippers, with the pagans, all of this together, and all saying, right, we want big happy family, brothers and sisters, that's from the devil himself, and not from Jesus Christ. Pope John Paul here is surrounded by a group of pagans. This is on November 7th, 1999. There you can see the pagan high priest. This is Shiva, again, with the dot there. Interesting to see his prayer beads again around his neck, just like the Catholics also have. And there in the back is the, a masked pagan. One of the mas rituals showing a masking uh, of one of the pagan faces there behind Pope John Paul II. Please look at this. News 24. Respect for religion urgent. And the Pope said, in the, in the current international context, the Catholic Church remains convinced that to encourage peace and understanding between peoples and individuals, it is necessary and urgent that religions and their symbols be respected. Uh, wrong answer. The religions and whom? Surely it should be the religions and Jesus Christ should be respected. Because if we all believe the same thing, we'll only have one religion. Remember, uh, the, the Lord explains and Paul wrote in Ephesians, one body, one faith, one Lord, one baptism. Right? So what's this multiple options that we have today? And today he says, and have a look back there again, you'll see religions and their symbols. Why is he calling for symbols to be respected? Because it doesn't matter if you're a Buddhist and you're bowing down to a, a, a Buddhist with a swastika sun symbol on your chest with the prayer beads. Or if you're a Catholic bowing down between the pagan sun symbol of Baal Haddad with the prayer beads. Or if you're a Muslim or if you're a Catholic or if, whatever you are. He says, we're going to be connecting all these religions together with these symbols. Pope Gregory the Ninth said, The Pope is the Lord and Master of the universe. Eh, wrong answer. Jesus Christ is the Lord with a capital L and the Master with a capital M of the universe, brothers and sisters. Now to close off this presentation, I'd like you to take you back to Rome. In Rome, as you walk into Rome, you'll see many different uh, tombs and uh, things to look at, but if you go into the, uh, the, 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 uh, towards the tomb of Pope Alexander VII, 
There you will find the tomb of Pope Alexander. This is interesting to see all the symbols on here. But these carvings have all got religious meanings. But I'm only going to focus on this one here. This lady here on the right hand side is called La Verita. Which means literally the truth. Now the best place to hide something is right in front of you. Ask any husband, right? You go to um, the kitchen and you say, you're digging around, you're looking for the salt. And eventually you call, uh, honey, where's the salt? She says, it's on the third shelf in the second door. You go, third shelf, second. Um, mm, no, it's not here. She says, no, it is there. No, it's not here. No, it is here. <sighs> okay, I'm coming. She comes. She walks past you, takes it off the shelf and gives it to you. Have you seen that before? If you're married or if you've got a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a husband, well, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The best place to hide something, the best place to hide the salt pot is right in front of you. So when Rome says this woman is the truth, and remember that in, Ro uh, in the Bible, a woman is a symbol of a church. This is the church, the uh, symbol of a woman carved, symbolizing the truth. Let's go, and, uh, for me that goes... And I said, oh, okay, I'll chase another rabbit. Let's see what Rome is hiding right in front of us to see. Let's zoom in a little bit and see. Remember, this is the woman, the church, that loves sun worship. There you can see her caressing and adoring the sun. But what can we see under her left foot? Let's zoom in a little bit and look under her left foot. What can you see there? Can you see? It's the whole world. And basically what she's saying here is this is the church that's going to take sun worship to the whole world. And it's called the truth. Wow. What a blasphemy. What an absolute blasphemy. And that's why when Revelation 13 tells us that all the world wondered after this beast, this, this antichrist beast, they worshipped whom? the dragon, and which gave power unto the beast. Brothers and sisters, so critical for us to understand. The whole world is bowing down in some way to sun worship. And by doing that, by, by submitting yourself to the authority of the Antichrist, you are involved in sun worship, and that is the worship of the devil himself. But thank the Lord for His truth. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 24, this is a psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's. In other words, the earth doesn't belong to Satan. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You and I, brothers and sisters, that dwell in the world, we belong to Christ. And you have an opportunity to submit to the authority of Christ. You have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. To say to the Lord, Lord, I want to put your filter into my religious experience. Show me the sanctuary. Teach me the truth as if you were to sit today at the table with me. Teach me the truth, Lord. Come and be present and let's study the sanctuary of God together. God's temple of truth. I look forward to seeing you in the next presentation. Thank you.